So last night I had this great dream, or what seems like it was this morning. I'm in some sort of a glass office tower in Seoul, I guess. And I'm having a, some kind of earthenware pot, hot lunch um, at the generosity of some hagwon, Korean Institute owner, a woman. And um, suddenly a man comes striding into the room, not unlike Martin Lent, a buddy of mine, uh, his father, whom I knew when I was uh, 18, 19, 20, and into my mid-twenties. Uh, my friend's father owned a telecommunications company. It was the first substantive job I had. And I started there right after high school as um, a technician in the shop. And then shortly thereafter, I was a draftsman. We drew enclosures for um, banking machines and phone answering systems. And I did some light illustration, a lot of technical drawing. Anyway, this man comes up to me. And in the dream, I recognize him as somebody who seems like one of the male Hagwon, Korean Institute owners. And he says, would you like to work for me again? You know, he's in his 50s. And I say, yes. And I get up and I stride with him to the elevator. And the Hagwon owner, the woman, sees me going. But there's this knowing in the dream, such as you have in every dream, where no words are necessary. And it's kind of like the emotional connection you have with people that you love. And she knows I have to do this because it's better for me. And she watches me get on the elevator. And I look at her and there's this understanding that I'll work for her too. And I, I ascend in the elevator. The doors close. And then I wake up. And uh, this probably has to do with the emotional channels I'm walking through in the last 24 hours because I spent last night at a hospital where my dad had a stent put in had a great conversation with the doctor who was explaining in technical terms all the arteries and the mesh work and the length and the diameter of the instruments that he had to put into my dad's femoral artery and then how the transverse area between the femoral artery and the aorta in my father is this meandering path through the abdomen and how he had to straighten it and it took two hours and he's telling me all about the French device and this device. And I was so touched by the fact that he was giving me all these details. Details such as I knew as a draftsman or details that I learn in part when I read about aerospace, you know. And I think it's because I had my NASA jacket on. <laughs> but it's also because this doctor was a great man. But I spent the evening in a hospital yesterday. You know, it's a similar kind of milieu, a hospital, a cemetery, your alma mater. You go into this very nostalgic state. My mother and I got lost coming home because the hospital was on the North Shore. So it was one of those family days where everything gets quelled and everything gets expanded. And everything's emotional, but everything's practical. So I wake up this morning and I tell my mother about the dream. Um, sending voice clips and little texts to friends in Korea and friends in Chicago and friends in San Francisco and friends in New York and Florida about this very emotional morning. And when I go into the bathroom to do my ablutions, I realize who the face of the man was who offered me the job. It wasn't actually a hagwon owner, although that's what his physiognomy satisfied. Uh, it wasn't Martin Lent, my buddy Adam Lent's father, although it satisfied that too. It wasn't Gil, Marie, Gil Ramirez, one of the technicians in that company uh, and businessmen. It wasn't uh, Tony. It wasn't Carmine. It wasn't Abe. It wasn't Antonina, the people that drew and did the engineering with me. It was Moon Jae-in, the president of South Korea. <laughs> Dreams are fantastic. Back to politics. I want to make a comment about the Louis C.K., Harvey Weinstein thing. Nobody normal. Nobody well socialized and programmed. Nobody crafted well by the society that we've had for the last few hundred, 
years in the West, nobody in America who doesn't have psychological problems, who wasn't abused, who wasn't left alone, who wasn't raised in a crack neighborhood or beaten by his father, behaves like Louis C.K. or Harvey Weinstein. But we don't hate these people when we're normal. We understand them. They have a psychosocial disorder. And for those of you out there who are feeling umbrage for the women, and in the case of Kevin Spacey, the man, who were taken advantage of by these people, well, good for you for caring about them. But if you're jumping on, you know, one of these bandwagons, if you're one of these hate men, women, bandwagoners, I don't have a lot of compassion for you. In fact, I have less for you than I have for Louis C.K., Harvey Weinstein, or Kevin Spacey, because these are people who are exhibiting more of our evolutionary sexual lineage and behavior than the rest of us who grew up normally and who were raised normally as gentlemen and ladies and people of restraint and people of normal inclination. And they're to be felt compassion for, not hated. And if you hate me for saying this, you're in another category too. You know, not much better than these people who are taking advantage of others. And I'm not saying this, you know, to take advantage of an opportunity to grandstand in any way. I'm saying that you're sickening me by attacking these people more than is necessary, right? Sure, they have to be dealt with. But um, I actually don't agree very much. I agree, but I don't agree very much with the people who are going after these people 20 and 30 years later. Look, when they say, oh, they were beginning in their careers, they didn't want to hurt their careers, they were afraid. Okay, I understand all that. I have compassion for it, but it still doesn't measure up. Okay, because they abided the sexual interaction that was being exhibited or taken advantage with on the part of the person who had these disorders, and they used it to step one more step up on the ladder toward their career. If it had meant so much, they should have done something about it then. And if they were showing compassion toward the sick person from whom they were receiving this bad behavior um, on any level, and they didn't want to expose them, then you understand what I'm saying right now. And for those of you who are saying, oh, I hate Louis C.K., I'll never watch another Louis C.K., you can never listen to Wagner again, okay? Because he was an out-and-out out and out ethnocentric xenophobe who hated Jews. Um, and there must be a million artists out there who have very well-developed talents and are quite good at making us happy in other ways, but they have deficiencies, psychosexually, socially, psychologically, um, so if you want to not watch Louis C.K. because of this uh, deficiency that he had and this advantage that he took of other people, he's made amends and he's probably willing to make more amends. And he stepped up as a man and said that he was sorry and he explained what he think was wrong with his thinking and so on. And for those of you who say, oh, he kept quiet all these years, nobody wants to ruin his or her life and that of his or her family by coming out, which is almost like looking for more attention and saying, look how good I am, after they've done something like this. Nobody goes to the police station and says, lock me up, I did this thing when I was younger. You know, no, nobody's going to do that. But he, he answered the charges and he said they were true and he admitted it at the point that he was able to. So have some compassion and reach out to people who are sick. Don't be a bandwagoner and enjoy attacking them because... That's worse than they are.